It's interesting how things work with faith sometimes. Uh, you know, sometimes you receive the faith in your heart first and then you, and then the reason comes to you. And sometimes you make the leap of faith intellectually and then God gives you the graces to have the, the, under, the, the wisdom and the understanding. And in this case, when I felt my prayer answered by St. Maximilian's praying for me, I knew without a doubt that he was in heaven. And I also knew, the more I read about him, that he had this great Marian devotion. And I learned about the miraculous medal through reading about him, uh, particularly in um, the book Forget Not Love, which is a biography of him, and also through the wonderful oral biography of him, uh, A Man for Others, by right. Patricia Treese, right. which has testimonies of people who knew him who testified during his canonization process. Right. And as I read about his Marian devotion, intellectually, you know, you have to put, put you know, two and two together and realize that, okay, I had thought up until now that, that having devotion to Mary, um, as with devotion to the other saints, would take me away from uh, from a devotion to Jesus, Saint Maximilian had the greatest <laughs> devotion to to Mary right. of of, yeah. of of any uh, saint, and he's in heaven. Right. So what does that tell me? That tells me that devotion to Mary certainly doesn't prevent one <laughs> entering right. in right. heaven. Right. And then, given right. the circumstances of his martyrdom, perhaps it even helps one <laughs> to right. enter heaven. Right. Right. So I. So I um, got a miraculous medal, and thankfully I received it from someone who overheard my asking uh, after church one day, how do I find a miraculous medal? And someone was carrying one, which is a very Colbayan thing to do, right. to carry them just in case. Right. And, and so it was through reading St. Saint, Saint Maximilian's writings and learning more about Our Lady of Grace and the history of the miraculous medal that I started to to call upon Mary to ask her for the graces that I needed, including the graces for a stronger devotion to her. Great. And now this devotion uh, led you down um, the particular road of um, your apostolate to promote chastity. And that's a very important um, mission in today's world, especially. Um, so our, our, how did Our Lady help you in that regard? Well, as a blogger, one of the first things I started to do when I be started to become vocal about my faith was I started to have arguments with other bloggers, which <laughs> really? is not, not, not the most godly thing, thing to do, to, ar to argue. But I, I started to have arguments with bloggers, of b blogs with names like Feminist, uh, the, that's one, one blog, and with other feminist uh, blogs. And what I started to learn as I started to read these blogs more and find out about what made these women feminists, and I had myself consider, considered myself a, 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 a feminist uh, prior to my conversion. Mm -hmm. I learned that very often people who have such an anger towards Christianity, anger towards the church, anger towards people who promote chastity, this anger comes out of um, a fear of being judged. And the fear of being judged um, often manifests itself in, um, in a real aversion to Mary and Marian purity because they believe that the purity judges them. And what I began to learn as I because I, I myself was, had that fear of, of Mary. It's something that, in a sense, I'm still working on, even though, even though um, intellectually I know that there's nothing to fear. But I, I think that, um, you know, as, as Chesterton wrote, people think of chastity as just being white, but chastity, he said, is something flaming like Joan of Arc. Mm -hmm. And we see the fire and, and we fear getting burned uh, by it, but it's, it's a purifying fire and, and the mantle that Mary has as Our Lady of Grace is a mantle that always wants to cover us in, in, her, in her loving protection. 
the, the purity that, that can seem so daunting and so, and so unreachable, uh, unreachable is actually a purity that wants to protect us and then while protecting us continue to, to purify us but always out of love, not out of a desire to judge us or humiliate us but always out of, a, out, of, out of a desire to enable us to grow in love so, and, and while growing in love also to grow in, in, in repentance and in a, in a desire to share that pure love with our neighbor. So would you call it a, um, a motherly love, a motherly purity? It's very much a motherly love and I think that it's our society that tries to tell us that that um, that that the Christian religion is, 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 is that the Christian faith is is founded on uh, on judgment. It's it's our our own sins that will judge us. Right. Uh, there is judgment, right. uh, but but the judgment is from is 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 from our own sins. The judgment is never from the the purity. The pur Mary's purity is what saves us from the judgment uh, the, uh, of sin. When we, when we, in love and repentance, um, come into to her embrace and are embraced by her purity. Well, that's quite a miraculous um, role in Our Lady holds is to um, bridge that gap that we have between um, mm -hmm. our current states that we always have and, and, and that purity that um, seems so unreachable sometimes. And um, especially that jumping that, that judgmental gap, as you say, it's beautiful. Thank you so much, Don, thank for you, your... Uh, thank you so much, brother. It's an honor to, to be on. Well, God bless you. God bless you with all your, um, your wonderful apostolates and your studies and your continual growth in the Catholic faith. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, 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 and brother, um, I want so much for, for, for other uh, y young people to, to pursue holy lives. Can, while we have this screen time, can you recommend how people who might be discerning a vocation, might find good other me reading material or learn about it? Well, I can always recommend uh, amaria.com, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so a book uh, that we put out uh, that Father Stefano, our founder, has uh, written, which is um, um, all about uh, vocations. It's called Come, Follow Me. There's a very good book that your order published called For the Life of the World, I think, that's on St. Maximilian Kolbe and the Eucharist. Right. I picked that up while in Australia for World Youth Day, and that gives great insights into St. Maximilian Kolbe's Eucharistic theology for those who want to go a little deeper right. uh, in, in, into the Franciscan Friars of the Immaculate's theology. Right. So yeah, there's a lot of material like that, um, including... Um, all on marymediatrix.com, which is our, our main site. Marymediatrix.com. Dot com, right. So, thank you so much, Don. Thank for you your, so much. Your time. I'm Maria, this is Friar Roderick for amaria.com, and God bless you.